The West is home to many of our continent's most famous and inspiring natural resources. In totality, the natural resources of the West are unparalleled, and Westerners are proud of our legacy of stewardship. The dazzling landscapes, waters, and mountains add to our quality of life. These vistas are home for people and for the largest populations of many of North America's most iconic wildlife species. Several of these species are now flourishing after conservation efforts brought them back from the brink. This is true of elk, beaver, pronghorn, eagles, peregrine falcons, cutthroat trout, and most recently grizzly bears. And as we see some of the great recovery efforts, just for example, outside the Endangered Species Act, when you think about the bison, you think about our nation's bird, the bald eagle. I mean, these are things that we are view as a challenge, but we also view it as a great opportunity for leadership that we can do some remarkable things here in the West that perhaps cannot be duplicated elsewhere in the country. A collaboration is also underway in the West to bring back one of the continent's rarest mammals, the black-footed ferret. This masked mustelid was thought to be extinct in the late 1970s. I can remember in high school seeing the wanted posters for black-footed ferrets at the local sporting goods store, wanted alive, black-footed ferrets. And then the discovery of the ferrets and, and Matitsi was, was exciting to sportsmen and, and conservationists throughout the state. It all started when a ranch dog turned up with a ferret in its mouth on his owner's porch. A species that was thought to be gone had been rediscovered. The hope faded when prairie dog numbers dropped in that area. Prairie dogs are the key food source for black-footed ferrets. So the Wyoming Game and Fish Department led efforts to take the ferrets out of the wild. Only 18 of them remained. In the ensuing years, a successful breeding program by Wyoming's wildlife managers started, and a partnership grew with federal agencies, states, tribes, conservation groups, and zoos. That partnership was successful enough that 25 years ago, Wyoming again played a significant role in the recovery of black-footed ferrets. For the first time, the animals were released back into the wild. Wyoming Game and Fish released them on a private ranch in southern Wyoming. Thanks to ranches like this and others around the West, state agencies like the Wyoming Game and Fish Department, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and others all teamed up to provide habitat and a chance at survival for black-footed ferrets. Largely due to the non-regulatory, voluntary incentive approach, landowners, tribes, and land managers have stepped forward. And now, across the West, there are more than 27 sites where ferrets have been released. All in all, eight states are home to black-footed ferrets again, and Canada and Mexico also have reintroduced ferrets. But challenges remain for ferrets. They are dependent on prairie dogs as a food source, and the invasive and non-native sylvatic plague can decimate colonies of prairie dogs and species that depend on them, including ferrets. Research is ongoing to develop a vaccine that can be used in targeted situations to ward off the plague in prairie dog colonies. An additional challenge is having enough suitable release sites. Supporters of black-footed ferret recovery are seeking incentives for landowners who want to support black-footed ferret recovery to further encourage people to participate. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has been flexible with regulations using safe harbor agreements for landowners and exemptions to the Endangered Species Act, like the 10-J rule. The ultimate benefit is, is that it provides us a tremendous opportunity for the recovery of a species that once was part of this great state. Thanks to the 10-J rule, there will be a new and exciting plan underway. Later this summer, North America's only native ferret will be released back on the site where the recovery efforts started on two ranches near Matitsi, Wyoming. It's a great opportunity for not only Matitsi and the state, but the country, and for people who care about species all across the globe to say uh, welcome home to a wonderful, wonderful success story and an animal that uh, has become uh, you know, so much a part of the hearts and the minds of so many who've, who've tended to it these 35 years. This summer, ferrets are on their way back. This is thanks to the collaborative efforts of many, ranchers, tribal members, conservationists, wildlife managers, and land managers, using a different approach to help an endangered species recover. And behind it, the pride and spirit of the West ensure this part of the continent will always have wild places and incredible wildlife.